Okay, so if you now look at page six of your quantum physics notes, this one is regarding energy level of electrons. Now, what do you mean by energy level of electrons here? Now, when you're talking about an electron, you remember that electron always tends to orbit around a nucleus. This is the general structure of an atom that you have learned before this. For those electrons, there are actually certain allowed orbits in which the electrons can exist without emitting energy. The energy associated with an orbiting electron is the total energy that it has in orbit. So when you're talking about the energy that an electron has, it would have kinetic energy due to its motion. So you see your electron here is actually orbiting around your nucleus. It actually has motion. So you have Ke here. And then at the same time, it also has potential energy due to the attraction between your electron and your nucleus. So if your electron is orbiting around your nucleus, the nucleus itself is actually positively charged. So your electron actually has some form of attraction with your nucleus. So you have Pe here, okay? So if you add up the Ke and the Pe of your electrons, that one is actually your total energy of your electrons. So for the case when you have electrons orbiting around your nucleus and there are certain allowed orbits in which they can exist, it follows that electrons have certain allowed energy levels. These are called your electron energy levels. So for your electron energy levels, they are normally represented as a series of stacked horizontal lines that increase in energy. So if you look at the diagram on the right here, on the top right hand corner, you see a series of lines. That is what we mean by your electron energy levels. Okay, and they tend to increase in energy in this particular direction upwards. Okay, so electrons tend to occupy the lowest energy level available, which is known as your ground state, but they can move up the energy levels if it absorbs energy from another source. Okay, your electrons tend to occupy your lowest energy level first, which is known as your ground state but they can actually move up your energy levels, meaning to say it can move up from here to here, from here to here, or from here to here, if it absorbs energy from another different source. So when it wants to absorb energy from another different source, it could be from a photon absorb, it could be due to collisions with other atoms or electrons, or it could be from direct heating itself, okay? But for your chapter quantum physics, you consider the absorption of photons. All right, you don't consider the other two cases. So here, if say you have an electron and it absorbs a photon of energy delta E, it will jump from a lower energy level, say from E1 to a higher energy level E2. So you look at the diagram just directly above here. Here, you have an electron at the ground state, okay? It absorbs a photon. So that electron absorbs the photon energy and it subsequently jump out to this level here. So you can imagine that maybe this is energy level E1 and this is energy level E2. So one thing to note is that in order for your electron to absorb your photon energy and then jump to a higher energy level, the important thing to note is that the photon absorbed must have energy equal to the difference in your electron energy levels. Okay, so what we mean by that is something like this. If you say that the difference between E2 and E1, the difference in their energy level is say maybe 3.6 EV, say from here to here is 3.6 EV electron volt. In order for your electrons to jump from E1 to E2, the photon energy here that it absorbs must be exactly equals to 3.6 EV. It cannot be any more, it cannot be any less. If it's more than that or less than that, the photon just won't be absorbed. It will only be absorbed if the energy of the photon is equal to the difference in your electron energy levels, okay? So this is also applicable when your photon is emitted later on, okay? Now for the part where your electron absorbs an energy and jumps to a higher energy level, this process is known as excitation and your electron is said to be in an excited state, okay? That particular state usually does not last, okay? It is an unstable condition and the electron will eventually return to a lower energy level. So when it returns to a lower energy level, like for the case that we have just now, the electron falls back from E2 to E1 and re-emits photon. 
where the energy level difference is the photo energy delta E. Okay, so if just now you were at E2, and now you jump back to E1, you're going from here, and then fall back to the lower energy level here, the result of that is that you will emit another photon. Okay, and the photon energy is again equals to the difference in your energy level. So if just now I mentioned to you that the difference between these two energy levels is actually 3.6 eV, the photon that you emit eventually will also be 3.6 eV, okay? So you notice that absorption and emission, the energy of the photon must always be equal to the difference in your electron energy level, okay? And the photon that you emit would have a certain frequency f as well as a particular wavelength lambda because you can actually look back at the fact that previously we said the energy of photon is equal to hf or h0 over lambda so whatever photon energy that you emit will always correspond to a particular frequency it will always correspond to a particular wavelength okay now for the case where your electron falls back to a lower energy level it can actually do so in a number of ways. It can do so in multiple steps, where each step emits a photon, all right? So for the case where, say, you had an electron that jumped from this energy level to a higher energy level here, when it wants to go back down, it can either fall back in one shot like this, or it can fall back in staggered steps like this. This is one way. Or another different way could be something like this. And the last one could also be in this manner. Okay, so when your electron falls, it can fall in a few staggered steps. All right, but the thing is that for each step it goes down, you will emit a photon. Okay, so that's for electron energy levels. Now, if you want to prove that there's the existence of electron energy levels, specifically the existence of discrete energy levels of your electrons, you will need to refer to something called line spectra, okay? Line spectra is a phenomenon when excited atoms emit light of certain wavelengths that correspond to certain colors, okay? Line spectra is important because it provides evidence for the existence of discrete energy levels in atoms. So, Discrete here could mean specific, okay? There are specific energy levels in atoms. So what is your line spectra in the first place? Line spectra can be divided into two types, emission spectra and absorption spectra. So the most common one that you tend to go through first is something called emission spectrum. So let me just clear out the screen here. So what is actually your emission spectrum? Emission spectrum appears as a series of colored lines on a dark background. That one is actually referring to this diagram that you're seeing right over here. You see there's a dark background and then you see that there are a few colored lines. That is what you call as your emission spectrum. Okay, so how did you come about having that image there? How do you come about getting an emission spectrum? You had to use something called a gas discharge tube. You see this thing here in the diagram? This one is called your gas discharge tube. It contains gases of certain elements. Like in your case, it contains hydrogen. So what you want to do with a gas discharge tube is that you let current flow through your gas discharge tube. The electrons in the gas atoms inside the discharge tube will be excited by the collision with the charge carriers passing through the tube. What this means is that if you have current flowing through your tube right now, you would have electron flow or charge carrier flow through the gas discharge tube. The electron that flows through will hit the electrons of the gas atoms already inside the tube. So these electrons jump to a higher energy level. Okay, they gain energy and jump to a higher energy level. This time, the electrons jump to higher energy level because of collisions with other electrons or other atoms, not because it absorbs a photon, okay? So your electrons gain energy to jump to a higher energy level, but eventually they will return to a lower energy level and emit photons of specific frequency or wavelength, okay? So each wavelength or photon that you emit represents a certain color of your visible light, 
All right. So in your case here, right now, if you say that your electrons have specific energy levels, like the ones that has been shown here, what actually happens now is that your electron is at the ground state. It absorbs a photon. Let's just say, sorry, it doesn't absorb a photon, sorry. It collides with your electrons from your current, and then it jumps to a higher energy level from here all the way to here, okay? Then after that, it wants to fall back down because the state is unstable. So I mentioned to you, it can fall down either in one shot or in number or in a number of steps. So the possible ways in which it can fall down could be like this, where it emits this photon, like this, where it emits a photon, and like this, where it also emits another photon. Or it could also fall down in one single shot where it emits this photon here, okay? So all these photons that are emitted represent a certain wavelength because they are representing a certain energy of your photon. So they represent certain wavelengths and hence certain colors of your visible light. So they are all emitted at the same time at your gas discharge tube. So because they're all emitted at the same time, from your gas discharge tube, they will tend to combine together to form a single resultant color. You just see a single color in the first place from your gas discharge tube. So what you want to do then is that you want to direct the light from the gas discharge tube towards a prism, okay? This one is your prism. It's some glass block that is shaped like a triangle. So what a prism actually does is that when you shine light through it, it will actually split up the colors of the incident light, okay? So here, in your case, what you want to do is you direct the light from your gas discharge tube to your prism. Then the prism will do its work in splitting up the colors inside that light. So what you end up in the end is that on the screen behind your prism, you will tend to see a few colored lights, okay? So the prism here, separated the colors by causing them to bend at different angles once the light passes through so that each of the colors that you see are actually at, ending up at different spots on the screen behind okay so you will notice that in my case i have this photon corresponding to red light is ending up here i have this photon corresponding to green light is ending up here i have the other photon corresponding to blue light it ends up here and the last photon corresponding to purple ends up here okay so each line in the spectrum is produced by an electron transition from within your atom from a higher energy level to a lower energy level which produces a photon of a certain wavelength or color that you're seeing right over here okay so the importance of this color spectrum here is that it tells you that only certain wavelengths or frequencies of photons were emitted because you see all these specific colors. That means certain wavelengths, certain frequencies, or certain energies of photons were emitted. So specifically because you have only certain energies of photon emitted, this tells you that there are only certain energy level transitions possible within your atom, thus proving that there are discrete energy levels of electrons, okay? That's the reason why you need to learn emission spectrum. This is proof that your electrons have discrete energy levels. All right. So if you then move on to the next page. So each of the emitted photons has a wavelength associated with a discrete change in energy, which you can calculate out as E equals to HF equals to H C over lambda. All right. The colors that you observe depend on the type of element used in your gas discharge tube. Your element can vary between hydrogen, helium, argon, or mercury, okay? Any other element that can be found in gaseous form, all right? So each of those specific elements actually would produce their own unique set of spectral lines, okay? No two elements will give you the same set of spectral lines. If it's hydrogen, it's always going to give you this. If it's helium, it's always going to give you this. If it is argon is going to always give you this. And lastly, this mercury is always going to give you this. If you have different elements, they will never ever give you a same set of lines as another element. 
Okay, so that's the reason why you can actually identify certain elements just by looking at the line spectrum that you get out of it. If you always see this line, this one already can identify to you as hydrogen. If you see this line only, this will identify it as helium. Okay, so that is emission spectrum. Now, there's also another different kind of line spectrum called absorption spectrum. All right. One is emission, another is absorption. So absorption spectrum is usually observed when you pass white light through a certain cool gas, okay? So what you will see from absorption spectrum is that it tends to appear as a series of dark lines over a continuous color spectrum, okay? So that one is actually referring to this one here, okay? Now let's just consider this one first. If you were to shine white light into a prism, what comes out of it will usually be a continuous spectrum of colors, like the one that you're seeing right below here, okay? This one here is the color spectrum that you will observe before passing it through a cool gas. But when you pass that same white light through a layer of cool hydrogen gas, before eventually passing it through a prism, you will still have the same continuous color spectrum observed, but there are a few missing dark lines. You see, if you compare the first diagram above here and the diagram below here, they look almost the same with the exception that there are certain dark lines right over here, okay? This is the result you're passing through a layer of cool hydrogen gas, okay? So those dark lines represent certain colors missing from the spectrum, okay? So what is actually happening here in the first place? If you look at the diagram below here, this one is actually to summarize what I've stated above here. If you have white light, you pass it through prism, you're gonna get continuous spectrum of rainbow color. If again, you have that same white light, but you pass it through a layer of cool gas, and then you direct it through a prism, you again will still get your rainbow color, but you have some missing dark lines, okay? So how do you explain the existence of both missing dark lines in the first place? So you consider this now, white light contains a range of photons of different wavelengths. Your white light generally consists of all different colors, so it has all different wavelengths and hence a range of photons, right? So when your white light has a range of photons with different wavelengths, as it passes through your layer of cool gas, some of the photons inside your white light will be absorbed by electrons inside your gas atoms in the layer of cool gas, okay? These electrons become excited by absorbing photons with energy equal to the difference in energy levels. This is something that I emphasized a few pages back. Your photons absorbed that cause your electron to jump to a higher energy level must always have an energy difference equal to your energy levels must have an energy equal to your difference in electron energy levels, okay? Only then will your electrons jump to a higher energy level, okay? So the thing here is that when these same excited electrons try to return to your lower levels, your photons are emitted in all directions randomly, rather than the original direction of your white light. If you just look at the diagram below here, this one is the direction in which you're trying to shine your white light, okay? And it contains a whole range of photon energies because you have a whole range of wavelengths inside. So each of them correspond to certain colors, all right? But in the middle here, you have a layer of cool gas. So the cool gas consists of atoms. The atoms have their own electrons. So the photons, once it tries to pass through your cool gas, the electrons get excited. They fall back down and they will emit the photons again. But the photons, once they are emitted, they are emitted in random direction. So let's just say you look at the diagram here, your red colored light, the photon is emitted this way. Your green colored light, the photon is going this way. Your orange colored light, the photon is going this way, whereas your purple colored light, the photon is going this way. And then the rest of them, are emitted back in the original incident direction, okay? So this 
photons here are the ones that will continue on to your prism and then they'll get separated and be spread out across the screen behind the prism okay so for the photons that weren't inside the original incident direction the ones that emitted in different directions they would be missing from this part here so once you prison tries to spread out the different colors you will have certain missing dark lines the missing dark lines are actually due to these photons that were emitted in different directions they are no longer inside your original incident directions okay so you look back at the nodes some photons with certain wavelength corresponding to certain colors are missing when they pass through the prism thus leading to your missing dark lines okay so one thing to note is that the wavelengths missing from your absorption spectrum are the same as the corresponding emission spectra of the same element okay the ones the colors that you see in your emission spectrum are the dark lines that you see in your absorption spectrum in other words okay